Hi, Kevin here, and welcome to part three of NIVIC OQC1. In this episode, we're going to look at how we're going to get NIVIC QC1 to achieve stable flight. That's probably one of the more challenging uh, topics in building a quadcopter. The rest of it's just kind of hooking up the electronics, building the circuits, and make things talk. But when it really comes down to it, unless you can make this thing fly just kind of stably without a lot of bouncing around, like we kind of see it doing right now, that's not too bad, but it'll probably go into some oscillations here in just a couple seconds here. It's going to be really difficult to fly this thing. The idea is to make it move in a certain direction, you tilt it to one side and then kind of get a little more throttle, and then it actually moves either forward or backwards or left and right. What we're going to want to do is come up with an algorithm that will actually make it nice and stable. We haven't actually got that algorithm completed yet, but this is part one of our PID tuning, the algorithm that we use to actually achieve our stable flight, and then later on we'll have part two of this uh, kind of video series to show how we actually achieve stable flight. So anyways, let's take a look at what we got for our test fixture. At this point what we have is our quad there sitting on just kind of a little test jig with an aluminum bar pinning the uh, front and rear arms of the quad so it just vibrates on the roll axis, the starboard port, left and right side of it. As you can see it's kind of bouncing up and down right now and the idea is we're going to need to be able to write the algorithm so instead of seeing this bouncing here we'll see a nice stable quadcopter just kind of sitting there. So let's take a look at the software end of this. This is our little test console that we have. Um, I think you've seen this before. On the left hand side we have a chart for what our roll looks like kind of the oscillations, you can see them there, and there you can see the pitch. And as we would expect, it's nice and steady just because um, we have that axis pinned. Up here we have our artificial horizon, and we can kind of see the quadcopter bouncing back and forth there. And then we have the input coming in from the RC as well as the power sink there. So this is our main console, and again, I guess we have our Bing, uh, Bing Maps there, which will take the input from the GPS. But right now we don't, we're inside and we're just not getting a GPS reading. So this is the main screen of our flight console. What we're going to do is open up our charms by swiping on the left hand side, then we're going to hit settings, and then go ahead and hit adjust PID. And now we have a screen that's going to give us a little more information about what's going on here. So on the top side you see our roll, kind of the roll chart and the numbers that we have there, as well as the power that's going to the starboard motor and the port motor. The top is the actual uh, angle which the uh, quadcopter is currently at. The green is our target since we're just trying to achieve stable flight that's green. And air is zero. Looks like that's a bug. That actually should display the difference between those two. We'll take a look at that, but for right now let's just kind of keep going on with our video. Then we down here we have our blue line which represents the angle, and then down here we have the motor that's kind of going back and forth trying to keep up with the uh, trying to keep up with the actual angle of the quadcopter itself. Over here we have a little mechanism where we can adjust the PID, the proportional, the integral, and the derivative constants used in our PID controller. I'll be doing a post a little bit more on the details of the math behind this, but for now we just have a mechanism in place so we can kind of turn the different variables up, and as we do that, that should allow us to tune the quadcopter to achieve stable flight. So let's go ahead and bump up our P parameter, which is a proportional one. I'm just going to go ahead and select it. Then I can go ahead and use my arrow there. And now you can see as we're bumping it up a little bit, we're getting a little bit more oscillations. As you can see, it's kind of going wild over there. I'm going to try to stay back a little bit here. Let's kind of tamper that. I'm moving it down, and now you can see it's starting to kind of stabilize a little bit. So you can see that's where we had a higher p-value, which is going to apply more power when the uh, angle gets a little bit bigger, proportional component of that. So that ends Part 3 of NIVIC QC1. Hopefully Part 4 will be coming before too much longer, and what we'll do is we'll go into the details of how we made this thing be a lot more stable, as well as be able to figure out why that air is zero. I completely uh, spent the last couple days actually completely rewriting the algorithm for the communication stuff to make it go a lot faster. So right now I think we're looking at about 200, uh, 200 hertz, uh, 200 times a second we're updating the flight control loop. So anyways, uh, be in touch with you soon.